If you could only pick one keyword tool to use, which keyword tool would that be? Hi, I'm Roy Ryer from SEOTrainingSW.com and I'm a member of the Search Engine Academy. This is one of the most common questions I'm asked from new students involved in SEO training. And actually to answer that question is very difficult because to be very effective at SEO, there's a number of keyword tools that you must use to be a master of your trade. But a lot of these tools that I use are free and you don't gotta go out and spend a whole lot of money. And what we're gonna be doing in this little short little video is kind of show you some tricks and some tips that I use with some of the free tools. First thing I would recommend if you're doing any type of searching using Google Suggest or Google Keyword Tool or anything to that effect, that you want to disable personalization. Basically what personalization does is Google recognizes, remembers your search history and gives you search results basically based upon your search history. So to really use Google Suggest to its full potential and to get search results that are not filtered based on your search, you're going to want to disable this personalization. Now Yoast has a really cool tool. I'll just go right down here, bring this down here, and you can see the URL right here. It's yoast.com slash tools slash SEO slash disable dash personalize dash search dash plugin. This is a, a free little plugin that you can use for Firefox. And you just click on this little link right here. And this is going to add this into your browser, your Firefox browser. And basically what this does, you're going to see right here in the uh, drop down box where you can choose what search engines that you want to choose. You could use Google.com unpersonalized. And basically what this does, we'll just do a little short search here in Google. Let's search for, uh, we'll just type in shoes. And basically what this is going to do, it's going to give results that are not personalized. But there's another thing you need to do or I really strongly suggest you do. As you can see that I'm logged in here into my Google account. And what I suggest that you also do is to go into that little gear here and go to web history. And you're going to want to disable your result. We're going to go to the next page and we right here you're going to see right I have my web history disabled and my search history is empty. So Google is not collecting my web history. Now this is something I would also suggest that you change so you can get unfiltered results for when you're searching for Google. Now let me show you some really kind of cool things using uh, now that we have our web history turned off and that we're using these, uh, these, this filter basically. Now I'm going to be searching Google again. You can see that we have that by using the uh, plugin from Yoast that we're adding this little parameter right here, the PWS equals zero. Now you could add this manually, but it makes it a lot easier. Now many of you might know that one of my other uh, websites is radardetector.org. And last December, we started a new website. And we're doing very well for the keyword term radar detectors. And so we just typed in radar detectors. This would be the root keyword phrase. And you can see right down here, we're, I think right, right now we're about number two for this phrase. And by typing in what using Google suggests, you could see some other keyword phrases that are coming here. Google review, or radar detector reviews, radar detectors illegal, and radar detectors Best Buy. But I like to take this a little step further and just follow what I'm doing here. We typed in the word radar detectors. This will be our main root keyword phrase that we want to optimize for. Now let's just add an A to that right there. And we can see that we're having a list again. And this is Google Suggest. This is based on the search history of other users. And we can see radar detectors at Best Buy, radar detectors in Jammers, radar detectors at Walmart. So what I'll typically do is I'll have a spreadsheet open and I'll cut and paste and put these into a spreadsheet. So we'll start off with A, and then we'll type in B, and we can see, again, radar detectors, best buy, brands, best value. And I'm just trying to, do, what I'm basically doing here is brainstorming. And this is very important in doing your keyword research. And really great that we have Google Suggest, because this is basically based upon the history of other people that searched 
Google for these particular keywords. So we just go right through the alphabet, D, E, F, and all the way through. And let me show you some other kind of cool tools that uh, I like to use. Now I like to use the, also the shopping tab here. On your left hand side you'll see a link that says shopping. And even though I don't, on my current website, RadarDetector.org, it's strictly a review site. We don't sell radar detectors. But I'd like to know what some of these brands are that are popular, uh, the actual models. So again, if I just type in the keyword phrase uh, radar detector or radar detectors into Google Shopping, we could see that these are some of the most popular radar detectors. And some of these radar detectors you might not be familiar with. You also can do shopping by brand. But we're going to just basically, you know, repeat this whole thing. We, we see Google Suggest has given us other keyword phrases, such as radar detectors for sale, radar detectors California. Now we could add an A to it and see if anything comes up with A. Nothing's showing up right now, so let's back that up and let's try a B, see if anything comes up in B. We're not seeing anything coming up with B. We'll try C. Okay, Radar Detectors California has been used in Google Shopping. And we just go right through the alphabet again. And again, what we'll be doing is going to be putting these particular keywords into a spreadsheet and just do some more brainstorming. Here's some other really cool tools that you could use. This is really Google Suggest on steroids is what the website says. And this is really a neat little shortcut you could use. And then the uh, domain name right here is ubersuggest.org. Uh, they like to you know ask you to donate if you would, but it's a free tool again. And this really saves you some time. This, you know, I read, just type in radar detector, Let's try, we'll type in the singular version of Radar Detector. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through all the Google Suggest keyword phrases. So we don't have to do it manually. So you can see Radar Detector, Radar Detector Reviews. And real simple, you just highlight these, copy them, and drop them right into a spreadsheet. And you build up a list. And they're all alphabeticalized. So you can see here it's not doing our Bs for us are doing our C's for us and our D's. So this is a little shortcut, if you may. Now, here's another really cool tool that allows you to search Wikipedia, uh, YouTube, Bing, Yahoo, all at the same time, basically doing the same thing with Google Suggest. So let's type in the word. Let's try a different phrase this time. Let's try laser jammers. And you can see right here, we see... Uh, in Wikipedia, Laser Jammer, well, it just went away. In YouTube, we got Laser Collection. That's not a really good keyword phrase. In, but over here in Bing, we can see Laser Jammers. Laser Jammers Illegal. Laser Jammers for Motorcycles. And again, what I'm going to be doing is just dropping these into a spreadsheet. And we'll be building up on our keyword list uh, as we go on. I hope this, you know, little... Uh, tip helps you out. Google Suggest is a free tool, so you don't got to go out and spend a whole lot of money. I would take this a step further, though. Again, what we're doing here is doing some brainstorming. I would then take this spreadsheet and then put those into the Google Keyword Tool to see what type of search volume there is. Use Word Tracker, use SpyFu, and build this up. But typically, what I'm doing here is I'm starting off with just some free keyword tools, and hopefully, this is going to make your job a lot easier. If you do enjoy this video, please consider sharing it with a friend. Also, if you're viewing this on our website, seotrainingsw.com, uh, we do have a like button up on the top. You know, please, you know, like this and share this with your friends. Just have a great day. This is Roy Ryer from seotrainingsw.com and the Search Engine Academy. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye bye. Ah, good evening, everyone. I just gave about a 60-second a intro, not realizing that my mic was muted. So um, thanks for that confirmation that you now hear me. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thanks for joining me. And if you've 
If you've been to a prior SEO Pro consulting event, you've probably heard me talk about a few abstract things about cool tricks you can do with AdWords. But to be quite honest, what we're going to talk about tonight is one of my true passions, which is using it as a keyword research tool. My personal opinion is that research, most research tools out there aren't anything close to research. They're just educate, educated guessing tools. And we're going to talk about how you can use this to learn more about your client's markets as an SEO consultant, how to learn more about your own market if you're doing SEO for your own website, um, and just be a lot more efficient at what you do with a lot less work than what most people do when they roll up their sleeves and start doing SEO for a website. So uh, with that said, let's get going. So the biggest problem with the typical way people go about SEO is that they just jump right in and pick a few keywords and decide that's what they're going to they're going to start optimizing for. Even if you've done your initial research, um, those are just, as I've said before, those are educated guessing tools, and they can only tell you about estimated traffic. They tell you nothing about your website's ability to convert that traffic into profitable business. And in my personal opinion, anyone who goes and, and jumps in and starts doing SEO on a website without doing actual research on the, the profitability and viability of those keywords is putting the cart before the horse. And they're, quite frankly, working a lot harder than they need to. Um, and with all of that said, you know, they may do really good. You may do really good at getting your keywords to the first page of Google. But what if after all that work, you make it to the first page, maybe even make it to number one for keywords? What if they don't convert? Was it worth all of that effort? And what I'd like to talk about tonight is ways to save all of that blood, sweat, and tears and frustration and sometimes clients' frustration because they can start to get frustrated if you're not making progress quickly enough and so on. And I want to I want to share some thoughts I've had, some experiences I've had that can avoid those frustrations for you and for your clients. And by the way, you are welcome to chime in uh, questions. I've got my questions panel opened up. I've got uh, my attendee list opened up. So if you have a question or just want to raise your hand and have me unmute you so that we can talk back and forth, uh, you're more than welcome to do either. I'm glad to interrupt what I'm talking about, uh, especially if it's to clarify something that didn't quite make sense. So just keep that in mind, and I'll be... I'll be watching for your questions. Otherwise, I'll just talk one way, and you can quietly listen on that side and, and uh, take notes or do whatever you like to do. So um, again, just to elaborate on that problem, before you can actually measure the effectiveness of a keyword, you actually have to rank for it. And like we talked about, that takes a lot of, um, a lot of work. And in fact, a lot of times, you know, when you take on a new client, they say, we want to rank number one for this keyword. Well, nine times out of ten, that's a keyword that's going to be very difficult to obtain. And you're probably going to have rather slow progress. And they'll be calling you every day or every week or every few days and checking in, how are we doing, how are we doing, how are we doing? And it's going to be slow progress, and it's going to be frustrating for you both. Um, my personal opinion, I don't care what the keyword is, I don't care how competitive it is, my opinion is that you should do the opposite of what all your competitors are doing. And even though you know they say, hey, we want to rank number one for supplements, that's great. Well, other, all of your other comp competitors are saying, okay, that's great, it's going to be a $10,000 a month budget, we're going to work really, really, really hard for you, and we're going to take you from 150th to 130th next month, and then 110th. That's really slow, really frustrating, and again, you might eventually get to them to the front page, and what if it doesn't convert? You're going to have a really frustrated client on your hands. Why not just say, hey, I understand your concern. Let's just buy that traffic. I don't care what keywords you want. Let's just buy the traffic and um, see how it does. Their first reaction is, well, we don't want to spend that money. We want the free traffic. And you and I both know that there's no such thing as free traffic. It's going to take work. 
it's going to take resources, it's going to take article writing, it's going to take link building. Um, and although once you get there, if you stop all work with SEO, then yeah, sure, it's kind of free traffic. But um, my argument, I'm a bit lazier about things. I'd rather just write a check and verify that it's going to be worth my while once I do rank for that keyword. Because if you have a client that wants to rank for supplements and they're currently not even on the first five or six pages for that term, it's going to take a long while until you can get them there. Or you can say, tell you what, I absolutely understand that. Let's pick your top five or your pop top 20 or your top 25 keywords and let's drive some traffic at it starting 15 minutes from right now. All I need is your credit card. And you can, uh, instead of being just a, you know, jump when they say jump consultant, you can be an advocate for them and actually help them out and say, you know, I've got a hunch that the keyword supplements or mortgages or some wild and crazy keyword that they think is that they're going to make a killing with isn't as valuable as a keyword as you thought. And I, I think that we, we might want to take a different strategy. So my argument is just say, let's spend a fraction of what you would spend on SEO, get results by tomorrow or by next week or by next month instead of waiting before we can even rank for a keyword, before we can even find out if it's a viable keyword. And I can tell you from personal experience, your clients will appreciate you for taking charge. You will take a different role in their minds. You're not just some lackey who they're paying lots of money who's going to do whatever they say to do. You are a trusted advisor who respects their opinion, but is also going to um, make sure that you take, take appropriate steps to make sure that you're not just spending lots of their money without a guaranteed uh, return on that investment. So, moral of this story is it does not have to cost anywhere near what you think it can cost. And, oops, what was that? So, um, so it, basically, here's how most people think of AdWords. And please chime in. Tell me if you can uh, relate to what I'm saying or not. Most people, when they think of AdWords, think of it as this big, expensive, um, cumbersome, awkward tool that, um, and maybe they've even tried AdWords and they throw up some keywords and what ends up happening is about 20% of that traffic comes in through the exact match terms that they bid on. So in other words, whatever keywords you upload, only 20% comes in from those actual keywords. Another 30 to 50% comes through phrase and broad match, which are usually very untargeted terms. And what ends up happening is you spend a lot of money really quick, you don't make any conversions or you make, you know, you lose 90 cents on the dollar and you give up. And nine out of 10 people that I talk to have this experience and they get a very sour taste in their mouth about AdWords and they quit and they move on and that's that. And they never look back at AdWords again. And then they go and just work, 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 work and try to get free traffic or they try out Facebook or they try Yahoo and Bing because maybe that's a better network and I'm here to say that none of them are better. AdWords is the best R&D tool out there and it's by far the cheapest R&D tool out there. Um, and by R&D I mean research and development. There's just nothing better than it. So. Basically, if you've had this experience, if you think of AdWords as something that you know just spends a lot of your money really quickly, that's because you've taken the, the wrong approach. And don't feel bad about it. That's what 90% of people do when they get started with AdWords. That's because the default settings that are in your account when you start an AdWords account are completely wrong. They are they're they're great and you might get lucky and you might convert at an okay level, but they're completely wrong from an R&D precise measuring tool standpoint. And that's what we're after. We're not after all the traffic we can get. We're after just simply verifying 
whether or not the keywords that we want to spend all of our time, blood, sweat, and tears optimizing for can actually make us money. That's more important than anything else. I don't care how much traffic a keyword has. If you rank number one for the word free blue widgets and you sell $50 blue widgets, that ain't going to get you squat, even if you get 100,000 visits a month. Um, and why would you spend all of that time optimizing for the term when you could just buy that traffic and find out by tomorrow whether or not that's a useful keyword? So um, the bottom line is there is no need, and this is a very important note that you, could, that you should write down in your notes and keep in mind for any time you use AdWords. For any, excuse me, any time you use AdWords specifically for keyword research. There is nothing that you need. If you're doing keyword research to find out the viability of your keywords for your SEO efforts, you don't need anything other than the search network and exact match terms for your keyword. You do not need phrase match. You do not need broad match. They will just get you more traffic than you want, and it will be less traffic less targeted traffic than you want, and you'll just spend money faster than you want and get less accurate results. Um, bottom line is all of that extra stuff, way too complicated. It's definitely good once you know the system and once you know your metrics, but it's, it's not necessary if all you're doing is keyword research. And that's all we're doing here. We're talking about spending small amounts of money, very small amounts of money, relative to what your clients will end up paying you in the long run for your SEO work. Um, and But the bottom line here is the results you can obtain are priceless. So that client who wants, who sells, you know, supplements for women and they've got their special formula that is, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, I guarantee that nine out of ten of those clients will come up and say, we want to rank number one for supplements. Hey, that's great. Let's take us let's make a small investment up front and let's just make sure that you can make sales for that keyword. And while we're at it, let's check supplements for women and supplements for women over forty and dietary supplements and best dietary supplements and about two or three dozen other keywords to just see how well all of those keywords are. And you can throw up fifty, a hundred, a thousand keywords that are all very targeted to what that they're all also very targeted and probably more targeted than the keyword supplements, then, and, and you can find out which ones of those actually make sales. Then you go and cherry pick the ones that make sales and you will, you will start ranking way faster, way sooner than um, if you just go gung-ho and try to optimize for the one to five keywords that your clients want. Because I guarantee the one to five keywords that they want are going to most likely be the slowest progress possible. Um, and it could take weeks or months before you even start seeing results. Whereas if you approach it from the other side of the spectrum, you could have results in a week. I used this exact strategy and took a keyword from 78th to number one in about a week. And that's a lot better than taking a ultra-competitive keyword from, say, 200th to 180th in a month. Um, so, and, and actually, that leads into a personal story. When I first uh, got started with SEO, I had already been online. I had already had my company for several years. I was spending fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a month on AdWords traffic. But our organic free traffic was zilch. We were getting nothing in free traffic. And my 78th example was a true story of me. Um, my best ranking keyword was 78th. And I hired an SEO consultant, and we were paying him, I don't remember, 1000 or $1,500 a month. Um, and you know, he said, well, what keywords do you want to rank for? That was about the, the extent of the guidance he gave us. And I said, well, I mean, we serve the whole Colorado Front Range. Let's go for Colorado real estate. And he said, okay, um, I'll, be, I'll, I'll give you updates every week. And sure enough, every week, you know, like when we started out, we were ranking, I, I'm serious, it was like 150th or 200th or something ridiculously high. Um, in other words, we were getting zero search results 
um, or zero traffic because people just simply weren't digging to the 20th page of Google to find <laughs> a realtor in the state of Colorado. Um, we had about 199 realtors ahead of us. So sure enough, he gave us updates every week and, you know, maybe we went from 200th to 195th and then 100. 92nd, 190th, you know, and I'd check in and I, and I kind of said, hey, this is great. We'll, we'll start, we'll make the first page by uh, 18 months from now. How, how, how are things going? And he just kept kind of responding with the same thing. Well, we're link building and these things take time and, and uh, you just have to be patient. And, you know, I, I didn't have $15,000 to invest over the course of the next 10 or 12 months on the off chance that he'll eventually get us to the first page. And, and then I found, uh, I, I started doing my own research and I found out ways to do things and there, I learned that I had all of the metrics I needed right under my nose. So I kind of did a split test and I actually took a different website of ours and I did SEO on that site while he did SEO on our primary website. So my other website was actually ranking worse overall than uh, our primary website, which was no surprise. We, you know, we didn't put a, as much energy into our secondary website. But within a month after just learning some basics and learning how to look through the tons and tons of data that I had right under my nose from the AdWords traffic that I was already buying, I was able to identify my best converting keywords, I, I identified my short tail conversion, my short tail keywords, and I identified, excuse me, I identified my long tail keywords. So being the, you know, the, the, the lazy person that I am, I decided, well, I don't want it to, I'll let him keep trying to optimize for the competitive keywords, but I'm just going to go after these long tail keywords that have gotten us handfuls of leads every month, and there doesn't appear to be any common uh, any competition because they're small towns and everybody's going after like Denver real estate and Colorado real estate and all the big sexy keywords that get lots and lots and lots of traffic and also have lots and lots and lots of competitors. So what I did was I took a long tail keyword in a smaller town that had like 2,500 residents and took it from 78th to number one in a week. So, and I, I just think that's so powerful. If you take on a new client and, and they say, I want to rank number one for Colorado real estate, I'm saying don't do what I end, what that first SEO consultant I ended up firing did because you're going to be the same as everybody else and you're going to get slow and boring results. You know, I'd love to say that you're going to find the biggest secret in the world and get you know, the keyword supplements to number one by next week, but let's face it, that's not going to happen. You do have to work at SEO to make it work. So why, why not take something that you can get results on by next week or next month? And sure, it doesn't have a lot of traffic, but the other good news is that it's way better traffic. You could do more with 10 long tail targeted terms than a, than a hundred or 200 short tail competitive terms. That's the definition of the long tail. And if you haven't read that book, go and read the long tail. It's a very, very powerful book. Um, it's so powerful, I don't remember the author's name offhand. Maybe if someone could type that in, but uh, it's definitely worth the read. So that's just kind of a personal story about how I got into the world of SEO pretty much by mistake by just simply looking at the data that was right there under my nose from the AdWords traffic that I had already been buying for years. Um, and that's how I kind of built that, well, that and a lot of great mentoring from some, from some, from some great uh, minds that I found at various conferences that I've attended is how I devo developed this philosophy that I still have today when I do any consulting, uh, whether it's SEO or for AdWords traffic. So basically, um, when we're doing AdWords for keyword research, um, I want to talk about why you know those great quote-unquote keyword research tools 
aren't so great. The bottom line is they all have inaccurate results, including Google's own keyword research tool. I have done tests where I will go and buy the exact match terms that they say have 50,000 searches, and in some cases I'll only get 20,000 searches in a month. In other cases, I'll get 80,000 searches a month in a month. The biggest thing there is that you're only guessing when you're guessing on keyword search volumes. But more importantly, there is zero value in um, there's zero value in knowing what um, how much keyword volume there is if you don't know how well that keyword is con is going to convert. I can tell you that I would rather do optimization for a keyword that only gets a thousand searches a month, but is a a longer tail, more targeted term than just jump in at a keyword like, say, supplements or Colorado real estate, even if it's getting a couple hundred thousand searches a month, because I just don't know what my ability is to convert that keyword. If I can convert it, great, but I need to know how well I can convert it and how much a visitor for that keyword is worth to me before I'm going to put my heart and soul into optimizing for that keyword. Um, so the bottom line is all of those tools out there, they're great for doing initial keyword estimations, but I hesitate to call them keyword research tools. They're just initial guesswork for uh, what, in my opinion, you should be doing as real keyword research, and that's just buying the darn traffic. Uh, Christy, great question. How did I identify my long tail to keywords? You know, it's interesting. I, I just... I basically stumbled into it in the fact that I just I just went after um, I I learned how to rank or or you know find out the rankings of all the keywords that I was uh, trying to rank for and I'll actually show you how to go and and just generate tons and tons of keywords and I took I don't know 800 or a thousand keywords that we were actually targeting because we're we're a pretty decent sized company we we uh, target 216 cities um, and back then maybe we were only targeting 30 or 40 cities but we have agents all around the Colorado area and uh, you know so basically what I did was I loaded keywords for all of those cities into my research tool uh, and you can do that this you can still do that to this day with Market Samurai which is a free tool that you get through Stompernet um, and there are various other research tools. And all I did was I loaded all my keywords up. And what I found out was that keyword in particular was 78th for, uh, and that was my best ranking keyword. So all I did was I said, well, if that's my best ranking keyword, it's my most likely one to be able to increase rankings. And it just so happened that it was my best ranking keyword because it wasn't all of that good all that competitive of a keyword. But when people were searching for that city, they definitely wanted to live there. Because if you think about it, like if someone's searching for Colorado real estate, they don't necessarily know what they want. If they search for Denver real estate, they probably have a better idea, but they still probably just got a job interview and they're just kind of kicking the tires. However, if they go and search for a small city, like, I don't know, Horsetooth Reservoir real estate, um, you know, that has a thousand visitors, then they, they know where they want to be. It's not because there are only like 20 jobs in Horse Tooth Reservoir. You typically have to commute into town. Um, they would, uh, you know, so someone searching for one of those cities is more specific in what they're looking for. They're farther down the sales process than someone looking for, say, Colorado real estate. So, did I have a formula? No. Quite frankly, I just went for the lowest hanging fruit and optimized for it and got immediate results. And I personally think that if you're an SEO consultant, you would impress your client a lot more if you say, T tell you what, I hear you. I hear you on wanting to rank for Colorado real estate and we'll put that on the top of our list. But if you don't mind, if you if you could give me maybe 20% of the budget and I'm going to pick a few other keywords that I think we can get you almost instant results on. 
and let's let's go after those. But before I even guess at what those are, let's buy traffic to those keywords and let's see if it can can convert. Um, and that's what you're doing here with AdWords. You just buy the traffic, and it does not have to be a lot of money. So to demonstrate, uh, Christy, hopefully that answered your question on on how do I define long tail. Um, typically, when you're buying the traffic, you can you'll see and you'll see the the keywords that have higher conversion rates um, are typically your longer tail keywords, and the numbers just dictate that for you. Now. This is just an example. This isn't an example of keyword research because it's actually only one keyword. This is just the single keyword, supplements for women over 40. Now, this is a demonstration of how AdWords is not nearly as expensive as you think. So my question is, are these good conversion rates? So we've got an average cost per conversion of just under 20 bucks. Well, we don't know. But what I want to say is this is a how a typical account looks where their acceptable conversion rate might be ten or twenty dollars. But do we see any patterns here? What I'm mostly am trying to point out here is that um, exact if if your if your acceptable conversion rate is say twenty dollars, there are only two match types that are actually acceptable here, and that's exact match and phrase match. Worse, if your acceptable cost per conversion is, say, $5, there's only one keyword that's doing you any good anyway. All of these others, you're losing money, and in some cases, you're losing money hand over fist. Um, so my whole argument is AdWords is nowhere near as expensive as you think it is if you just enter into it doing this. Just bid on exactly the terms that you want traffic for, Nothing else, because all of this gets you all sorts of other junk that you don't want. Just bid on the exact match terms, and I'll show you how to do that, and, um, and ignore everything else, because all we're doing here is R&D. We don't care about this extra traffic. We just want to see if we can convert this keyword, this exact match keyword, on Google, on Google's own network, at, a, at an acceptable rate. Um, and we'll talk about what an acceptable rate is uh, down the road, too. But this is just kind of a quick screenshot I wanted to show of why, why this isn't actually as expensive as you think it is. Most people jump in and they load the keywords with Google's default settings, which would get you all of this junk. It would get you these $12 per conversion keywords. It would get you these 20 per conversion broad match keywords. It would get you this near worthless display network traffic. That I mean, these are real examples. All I did was change keywords um, for confidentiality reasons. This is a real demonstration of what an account might look like if you loaded your keywords up with the default settings, which would deliver traffic for all sorts of uh, worthless terms. So the, the quick moral of the story is cut your costs by 70 to 90 percent. Use exact match only because that's all we're interested in. And you can, can you can pass this straight on to your clients and say, I want you to give me a thousand dollar budget to do R and D, and we're going to verify that every single keyword that you have me doing work for, and that you're paying me to do work for, will actually make you money before I lift a finger and before you spend a dime paying me to go and do SEO on that keyword. So that's that's the first step of just really earning their trust and being and moving in the direction of a trusted advisor, not just some guy or girl who's going to drive a bunch of worthless traffic to them or to their websites. So another example is um, this random example of, of keywords. And this is an example of what I'm going to talk about next, which is, which is tracking conversions. So let's just say that you know, your client says, we only want to optimize for these three keywords. Um, or actually, we, we just want to pick one keyword, and we want to put all of our energy into that. So based on this information, which keyword would we go for? And the answer, it's kind of a trick question. The answer is, we don't have enough data. This is nothing different than just guessing based on, based on keyword tools. And this is alleged impressions. Or, but even if these are actual impressions, we don't care. We don't want to make our SEO decisions based on search traffic alone. 
Um, instead, we might take it a step further, and we're going to run some ads. And we might see that the click-through rate is, although initially it looked like Blue Widgets was the best one because of the search volume, what we might quickly find out if we just simply run some ads is that Blue Discount Widgets has twice the click-through rate and ends up getting a lot more traffic for you, which is actually more important than just the search volume alone. We're not done yet, though. Then, it, the beauty of AdWords is we can track every dime we spend. And what you would actually find out if you ran a test is that you might find out that, sure, this has the most search volume, but the click-through rate, oops, the click-through rate isn't all that great. And actually, the conversion rate is pretty poor. Same for this one. This one has a phenomenal click-through rate, but the conversion is terrible. Why? Because you don't sell discount widgets. You might sell $50 or $100 custom widgets. So this is an example of how important it is to just buy the traffic. And you don't have to spend a lot of money in the grand scheme of things to find this information out. But what this does tell you is that your client Everyone else under the sun says, sure, we can rank you for blue widgets. We'll have you there within six months from now. You could do a week or two worth of research, track conversions, have a little bit of patience, and tell them that you're going to exercise a little bit of patience and find out actual results. And you come back to them with this report and say, tell you what, I actually have a pretty strong hunch based on this information that we want to go for blue custom widgets. It, sure, it has way less traffic, but the click-through is really good, and the conversion rate is phenomenal. You can only find that information out by buying the traffic. So I, I, I hope I'm not, I'm not uh, getting up too much on a uh, soapbox here. Feel free to chime in. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how I'm doing so far. If you've got questions, um, I want to kind of stop and answer those. Uh, before I keep moving on, but I, I just can't tell you how important this is. And this, I mean, sure, you may be able to ink that deal a lot quicker if you just say, sure, let's get going. We need to get going as soon as possible on Blue Witches. If you just exercise a little bit of patience and act as an advisor versus just a contractor who's going to try to help them as soon as possible, regardless of the results that happen, um, you'll have a lot better results in the long, in the long run. Um, quick question from someone. How do you track conversions if not sending to a website? Um, I'm assuming that your client has a website that they want to rank for. Uh, if you could maybe clarify that a little more, um, I, can, I can elaborate. But... Um, you know, I have demonstrated in the past how you can just track uh, track search traffic to see if there is actually as much traffic as they say there is. But you know, that's that's assuming that you don't have a website at all, and that's kind of a different discussion altogether. What we're talking about here mostly is you know making sure that we're assuming your client has an existing website and they want to hire you to do SEO on it. Um, so if you want to clarify that question, I'd be glad to answer it a little more clearly. But I don't, I don't know that I understand your question for sure. Um, while I'm waiting for that to come in, okay, so we did clarify. Yes, I am talking about sending the traffic to the client's website. I mean, they're hiring you to do SEO on their website. You're just saying, hey, let's, let's be a little more uh, diligent about this and let's do some research before we jump into what will very likely be a very large SEO campaign. Um, and they'll appreciate you for that. They'll appreciate you saying, before I go and spend $50,000 of your money on SEO, let's just, let's just spend a couple thousand dollars verifying that that investment will actually be worthwhile. Um, so that's kind of the, the bottom line that we're doing there. Um, that's my personal opinion. That's what I've been taught by some very, very successful uh, internet uh, consultants, some SEO experts, some super affiliates, they all do this same thing. They validate first, then they go hog wild doing SEO. Um, you should do the same thing, whether it's for your own business or for your clients. 
the big thing is you must set it up properly. And the lesson there is do not go with Google's default settings. You will lose money faster than you can say, I lost money. Um, and again, if nothing else, we've got a good uh, 15 more slides. But if nothing else, just remember that one lesson. Exact match only, search network only. That's all you need for R&D. So now we're going to talk about five bullet points, all having to do with everything you need to do, nothing more, nothing less, but everything you need to do to use AdWords to spend as little as possible and get as accurate results as possible um, in as quickly an, an amount of t as quick an amount of time as possible. So uh, we'll we'll talk about these five sections one at a time. So the first one is pretty straightforward. You go to adwords.google.com and sign up for an account. Now there are a few hints with this. One thing I found that a lot of clients actually do is they'll set up an account and they, they just they get distracted and they don't load up all their keywords or their ads. And then like a week later, they'll get a note from Google, from a Google rep, saying, hey, we noticed that you signed up for an account. Um, but you haven't started running ads. Is there anything we can do to help? Two things that happen with this. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a note that I have no sound. I don't know what I did. Did I possibly mute myself? I don't look muted. Do you hear me? Okay. I think I might have bumped the mute button on my microphone. Sorry about that. Where did you lose me? Um, were we to this hint page when my volume dropped out? Um, back up two slides. Okay. So uh, we, I lost you somewhere on this slide. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank goodness for these uh, real-time questions coming in. Um, so from basically now, everything we're going to talk about, I basically broke them into five different bullets. They all have to do with nothing more and nothing less than setting up a bare bones AdWords account that's optimized for maximum efficiency and minimum money spent. Uh, I've spent millions of dollars of AdWords in AdWords myself, uh, in my own money or my own company's money, um, but I'm still a cheapskate and I will not spend more money than necessary. So this is like, this is so you can do this type of research on a shoestring budget. Now, does that mean that you're going to be able to sell the, you know, mortgage keywords or jumbo jet keywords for a nickel? No. You will have to spend, you know, competitive amounts per click to get that traffic, but that is well worth the investment. I don't care what the cost per click is, it's still worth, well worth the investment. One of the biggest misnomers I hear from people is, oh, well, you know, I'm in the mortgage industry and I can't afford pay-per-click because that's a 30 to $40 per click industry. Well, I don't, I don't know what people are thinking when they think that they can just waltz into an industry that has 30 or $40 cost per click and that they can just waltz into that industry with SEO. If it's 30 or $40 per click, it's going to be hyper competitive in SEO too. So there's typically a pretty direct correlation with what you have to spend per click and how hard it is going to be to do the SEO, um, which is all the more reason that you need to have an adequate budget for setting up your AdWords account. But anyway, we're just going to talk about spending as little as possible to get as much accurate research as possible for your clients so that you can do the best job possible for them. So the first step, pretty straightforward, set up an account. Pick an email address, create a password, and you're in. Now a couple hints before you do that is, um, and I learned this just recently, Google is actually getting very aggressive. They've, they've gone back and forth on whether or not they're assigning reps and so on, and it's still kind of a random thing. However, what we have recently found out from a few clients is that if you go and establish an account, set it up, you know, sign up for a username and a password, but don't, don't enter a credit card yet and don't enter keywords and don't activate your campaigns yet. Um, and what we've been finding is that 
five to seven days after that account gets set up, if you don't have activity, Google will actually contact you. They will, they will either have an autom I'm sure they just have an automated email, autom automated email that gets kicked out, but it comes from them, it offers you a rep, they offer to set up your account, and it's a great way of, one, getting a rep who can help you when you have questions, which is invaluable, and two, um, they'll actually, sometimes they'll offer you a credit and say, can we offer you an incentive to get started? Can we, here's a $100 coupon. We've heard reports from clients who have gotten as much as $300 coupons to uh, advertise with AdWords. So um, that's just one quick tip for you. Um, another quick tip is when they set up your account, disable, disable everything except, except exact match terms in the search network. Remember, they're going to set up your account with their best practices in mind, and those are quite different from my best practices. Um, you, remember, you don't want display network traffic, you don't want broad match traffic, you don't want phrase match traffic. Um, real quick survey, if you guys could chime in with a question, just a quick yes or no. Does everybody here understand the difference between broad match, phrase match, and exact match? I'm not going to have a visual to explain it for you, but I can quickly explain it if needed. Yes, 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 sort of. Okay, good. We're good there. Um, and for the person who said sort of, that's okay. Don't worry about it. All you need is exact match, and I'll show you how to do that. Just trust me that broad phrase and display network is more expensive uh, most of the time, um, but definitely more expensive from a research stand standpoint. So the next thing and more important thing than even setting up your account is setting up conversion tracking. If you don't have conversion tracking, it ain't worthwhile. Don't do AdWords. It's not much different than doing SEO. Um, this is absolutely positively critical. It's pretty easy to do, but um, I'm surprised at the amount of people that don't actually do this. And not tracking conversions is, is like shooting in the dark. Worse, it's like, you know, taking your family member and putting an apple on their head and telling them to walk 100 yards away and shooting in the dark. Don't do it. Always track conversions. There are always things you can do to, um, to find out, to measure whether the traffic you're sending is converting into real traffic. Um, so, this is extremely important. It is literally as easy as one, two, three, and I'll outline those steps right now. So basically, the first thing you want to do is from within your AdWords account, you just simply go on over to the, uh, it's, it's actually the rec reports tab, and you go to the conversion. There will there'll be a little drop down, it would drop down right here, um, and you would just hit the uh, conversions link. And there are all sorts of helpful links right over here. What is conversion tracking? How can it help you? Um, all of that stuff. But it's pretty straightforward. You're going to name your action, and you know, you're going to say sale of blue widgets, um, mortgage lead. It, uh, it's not a big deal. I'm assuming you pretty much only have one or two types of conversions you would get, and it's typically a sale or a lead. And they ask you that here in this dropdown. You would just hit the dropdown, and you, you would tell them whether it's a sale or a lead. And if it's a sale, you can estimate what that sale is worth, and you can enter 10 bucks, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever your industry is. There's some kind of uh, advanced programming that you could do to actually track actual conversions, but I'm going to just keep it simple for right now, and let's just go with an estimate. You, your clients probably know what a lead is worth to them, and it might be 10 bucks, it might be 50 bucks, it might be 500 dollars. Enter that figure. Likewise for a sale. Most of your clients know what a sale is worth to them. You can just enter that figure. Um, and you just kind of finish this questionnaire. Yes, it's going to be English. Um, the conversion page security level, you have to know. You know so if the, it's a shopping cart, it's most likely a secure uh, page that you're going to put the script on. And you just, you just pick one or the other. And Google will then create a script for you. So step two is they give you this handy little one, two, I don't know, 12, 15 line script. Um, and all you do is copy this 
script and paste it onto your website. Now the important part is you just where you paste it on your website is important. Basically you just have you just have to put it on the page that shows up after the customer takes the desired action. So if you have a lead gen site, you would put this on the thank you page that shows up after they opt in. Um, and in a perfect world, you would put it on the on the page that shows up after they confirm your email, uh, assuming you're doing a double opt-in system. But it should be the thank you page that shows up after they take the desired action you want them to take. If you have a, a an e-commerce site that has a shopping cart, um, or if you have you know uh, some sort of a, a a sales site that goes through a shopping cart, it's also pretty simple. You take this code, you paste it onto the confirmation page that shows up after they give you their credit card number and after they confirm the purchase. So it's, it's really pretty straightforward. And all this does is Google puts this little code of, this snippet of code onto um, your thank you or your confirmation page. And that way, every time you drive traffic to a website, Google will say, it, they will track every single keyword and tell you exactly which keywords turned into a sale or a lead. And I tell you guys, that is so valuable. It's, it's like more important than anything you could ever do in your, in your research for your clients. I mean, knowing which keywords turn into sales versus just blindly driving traffic, that's what separates the winners from everyone else. So a um, uh, couple questions here. When, so is all my work done in my personal AdWords account? or do I create a new account for each client? Well, as an AdWords manager and as an AdWords consultant, I, I have a different account for every single client. And it's very easily manageable through what's called an MCC account. It stands for Multiple Client Center. Just Google the term um, AdWords MCC and you'll be able to find that. It's a free application. And if you do AdWords management for clients, it's a phenomenal tool because it lets you just bounce back and forth between multiple accounts really, really easily. Uh, another question is, can you put a lead capture form on a landing page, or does Google have issues with that, as in raising cost per click? That's a very good question, Paul. And basically, uh, you do need to be careful of, of having what I call a gun to your head squeeze page. You don't want to have a one page squeeze page that gives them no options other than opting in to find your easy button riches that you're you know, promising them they can get. That's going to get knocked down and, and disabled quicker than you could hit the activate button. Um, however, there are ways around that. You can have an opt-in form on the landing page. In fact, we do that all the time. Um, what you want is to give a good user experience and have some other resources, have some other links to other pages on your website. In fact, a best, the best way to do it is just to get a simple blog that has a site-wide opt-in form over in the left or the right panel. Um, and so that way it shows up on every page of your website. So that way you can give them lots of links that they can go and read other articles or other blog posts or other resources and get plenty of information without being forced to opt-in for whatever free report it is you're, that you're giving away. So that's a good workaround for that, uh, what I call gun to your head rule that Google has. Okay, so that's conversion tracking. Like I said, it's extremely important. So important that I'm going to tell you to quit right now and don't do AdWords if you can't implement conversion tracking. Um, but it's, it's just so important that you have to do it. So the next thing after you've done that is to just pick a budget. And that's, like I, like I said earlier, it's going to depend on your industry. If you're taking on a mortgage client, expend, expect to have a lot of competition and to have to do a lot of SEO. And, and likewise, Expect to deal with their objections about not wanting to spend thirty dollars per click for a mortgage lead. I mean, that's not. I'm not saying you have to spend thirty dollars, but if that's the going rate to get it to the get to the first page, you're going to have to spend it, and they're going to have to spend a lot of money to rank competitively uh, for the mortgage terms that they're going after, because there are a lot of mortgage companies already spending a lot of money on SEO, so uh, that can be good for you. And I still think that this, you know, advocate versus jump when they say, say jump strategy is still going to work for you in the long run because they'll appreciate that. You, what you don't want is to have 
a client like me 10 years ago, uh, actually it wasn't even that long ago, it was like seven years ago when I did SEO, uh, or when I hired, some, hired someone to do our SEO. What you don't want is a client like me who says, we want to rank for Colorado real estate. I don't care what you charge, it's going to take a while to get results and you'll end up getting a frustrated and resentful client. And I don't care how much money someone gives me, that's, life's too short for that. So that's just kind of my, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get back off my soapbox and now we'll talk about picking a budget. Um, this still is important because if you're getting into the jumbo jet industry, a $10 a day budget ain't going to cut it. Um, so it's, it's important that you make sure to, to estimate your budgets accordingly. And I have kind of a rule that um, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you're, you know, first you have to know your value per visitor. And that's what tells you what your break-even budget is. What we're shooting for is, a, is just a break-even. We don't necessarily worry about making a profit. Because remember, we're doing re research and development. And breaking even to do research is phenomenal. There are companies that spend millions of dollars on research without any expect, uh, you know, without expecting a return on that investment initially at all. So even if you just have a goal of breaking even for this research phase, that's fine. So to establish your value, value per visitor, all you actually have to do is just take your average profit, let's say that's $100, and um, divide that or multiply that by your average conversion rate. So if your average profit is $100 and your average conversion rate is 1%, well then your value per visitor is a buck. Well that's pretty straightforward. So the most you should spend on a cost in, in a cost per visitor is a dollar. And if your conversion rate is 1%, then theoretically you should break even for every 100 visitors you get. Now statistics don't work that way, so I have a five times rule. I want to I want to basically drive enough traffic to have had five conversions. And if I don't get a single sale after, like so, for example, if I'm in a market where I can expect a one percent conversion rate, if I don't get a single sale after 500 visits, then I know I have a problem. But just because you have a one percent conversion rate, that does not mean that you will make one sale for every hundred visitors. You could make you could have, I mean, it's statistically possible to get 495 visits and not a single sale and then have five visits in a row. It's rare, but it will happen. So kind of keep that rule in mind. And these are just a few benchmarks that you might want to write down. Um, have a budget, so de determine your value per visitor. And in this case, we've, you know, we've decided that if my client has, makes $100 per sale, remember that's profit, not revenue. But if they make a hundred dollars per sale, then they uh, hold on. I'm getting I'm getting Skype message like crazy from a from someone. I want to verify. There's nothing that's urgent. Okay, I'm okay. Um, sorry for those chirps if they're coming across for you guys. But anyway, um, you want to enter into this with a realistic expectation. Like I said, if you're selling jumbo jets, you're going to need bigger than a thousand dollar budget because your average visitor is probably going to cost you fifty bucks, and you're probably going to need, you know, five hundred to a thousand visits. So you're going to need a five thousand dollar budget. Um, but that's okay because you're selling jumbo jets, and they probably have a million dollar budget. Um, but for whatever the case, if you're selling golf clubs and your average prop, their their average profit is a hundred bucks, their average conversion rate is one percent, your value per visitor. One dollar, average conversion rate is one percent, so our testing budget should be at least five hundred dollars. Not a big deal. That's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. Um, so I want you to kind of keep these percentages in mind and just write these down. And when you're when you're uh, talking with your clients, kind of have that consultative approach and pick their brains. Talk about what their vet visitor value is. Ask them what their average close rate is. Ask them what they make per sale. And then come up with a testing budget that you propose to them and say, with your permission, I'd like to use X amount as a testing budget before we go hog wild doing SEO because I really want to verify that these keywords are as valuable as we think they are before we start spending money on it or before we start, start do, 
doing SEO to drive quote unquote free traffic at it. I'd rather just buy the traffic and start getting results tomorrow. And it's that quick. I mean, you could have results. You could start getting traffic in as little as 15 minutes from right now if you start an AdWords account. So um, does anybody have questions about picking your budget before we move on? Um, I've, I've often assumed that this is uh, a simple concept, and sometimes people just want to uh, get a lot more clarification on that. So now's the time to chime in if you want more clarification, otherwise I'm going to move on to bullet number four. Going once, going twice. Um, no, Okay, quick question. Is that a daily budget? No, absolutely not. This is your testing budget. What you're doing is you're basically saying, okay, look, I w we're in a market that gets 1% conversion rate. I'd like to drive 500 visitors, and this is per, it's not even per keyword, it's per group of keywords. So if I'm selling blue widgets, if, I, if I'm selling blue widgets and red widgets, I would consider those two keyword groups. I'm going to have my, you know, custom blue widget ad group, and it might have 5 to 100 keywords in it, and I'm going to have my custom red widgets uh, ad group. Or I might have a custom blue widgets ad group and a discount blue widgets ad group. I would consider that that's two ad groups. So I'm if this is a one percent market, that's two ad groups that I'm going to test. So I'm going to want a thousand visits, five hundred for each, just to test the viability of those markets. Um, and these are just recommended volumes. If they say, ah, we don't have that much in our budget, we only got five hundred bucks. Well, work with what you can and do research. I'd rather see you research blue widgets first, test the viability of it, see if it can convert, go and start optimizing for the best long tail terms that have converted for you, and then say, okay, we've proven on that, I'm working on blue widgets, now let's go and test red widgets, or you know some other variation of keywords that they want to target. So um, that was a great question that is definitely not a daily budget, but it's kind of a, it's a testing budget per group of keywords that you're going to uh, test for and see if you can make sales. Good question. Okay, now let's move on. Item number four, campaign, ad group, and keyword structure. A lot of people get all hung up on this. And again, this is a pretty simple thing. It's kind of like creating an outline for what you're going to do. Basically, your campaign is your bucket that you organize all of your ad groups into. And then within each campaign you have an ad group. So with our let's let's use something a little more applicable. Instead of blue and red widgets, let's use the golf industry. So I would have um, campaign one might be uh, golf clubs. Campaign two could be golf shirts. Why do I have those in two different campaigns? Because my golf clubs are worth $100 per conversion. My golf shirts are only worth $5 per conversion. Um, so I want to keep those in different campaigns because I'm going to be making entirely different bids on those two different sets of keywords. And then up here in my golf clubs campaign, I would have maybe Ping and then, I don't know, Wilson <laughs> and, and various other categories of golf clubs. And then within each ad group, I would have buckets of keywords. I would have anywhere between five and a thousand keywords. As long as they're closely related to whatever ad group it is, I can put as up to 2,000 keywords per ad group. So we have a campaign, which is kind of your Roman numeral one, your ad group, which is a uh, capital letter A, and then um, keywords would be uh, regular number one. Um, and you would have one to five to two thousand keywords per ad group. And then wash, rinse, and repeat for each ad group. The important thing is just kind of organize your campaigns. I really recommend that you organize them not only by separating like golf clubs from golf shirts, but also separate values. Um, if you have a wide or wide variety of values of keywords, because Ping golf clubs is going to be worth a lot more money than ping 
golf socks. Um, and you're going to be bid, bidding entirely differently. So just keep that in mind when you set up your campaigns, and you should be pretty good to go. So I actually did flesh that out using widgets, just so you have a visual. So this would be my campaign name. I would have red widgets. Now Then I would have an ad group of custom web, red widgets. And I might have a different ad group of discount red widgets. And I would have a bunch of varied keywords that are all closely related. Notice that all of these are very closely related to my ad group. That's the important part because this is, this is a group of keywords that I'm going to test. So I would allocate, you know, if, if these wet, red widgets, if I have a, well, okay, let's say I have a value per visitor of 10 cents and a conversion rate of 1%, well, then I have a testing budget of not $500, but $50. I would, I would allocate $50 to this ad group. I would allocate another $50 to this ad group. That way I know I'm going to get um, 500 visitors, roughly 500 visitors, before I make a decision on whether this is a worthwhile uh, keyword form, set of keywords for me. Uh, question. So you so you set up the budget for the ad group. Yeah, when I'm recommending a testing budget, you should do a, a testing budget per ad group that you're going to test. That way, it's also going to ke help keep your clients in check. Oh, well, we you know instead of having them go, oh, well, we want to rank for these hundred keywords. Okay, that's going to be ten groups of keywords. That means I'm going to need not five hundred dollar testing budget. I'm going to need five thousand. Then, then all of a sudden, they make your job easier because they go, "Oh, okay. Uh, well, how about how about we just test these twenty keywords?" <laughs> so you get to keep them in check by by taking this approach too, because sometimes it can get tough. A lot of clients might just be ready to jump right in and um, and say, "Okay, we're going to optimize for a hundred keywords," and that's going to slow your progress down a lot. And uh, it, it's this is a good way of just kind of keeping your clients in check um, so that they know that, oh, well, I guess that's true. We can't just go hog wild. We, we've got to have focus. So let's pick our best two groups of keywords and test for those. Um, and again, this isn't a hard and fast rule. These are recommendations that you're going to need to have a little bit of wiggle room in, plus or minus, um, depending on your client's budgets or your budgets. and. Uh, and how competitive the keywords are, and more importantly, what the conversion rates are. But um, just keep kind of those rules in mind, those those percentages that I outlined before. You know, if you're in a market with one percent, yeah, you want five hundred. You want to test. You want to drive five hundred people to your website before you can make a determination about how profitable those keywords are. If you're doing lead gen for someone and their conversion rate is twenty percent, great. The higher your conversion rate, the less visits you need. That's just the way statistics work. So um, you still would want enough traffic to generate what should be five conversions. Um, but if you're converting at 20%, that actually only takes 25 visits. That way, if you get 25 visits and you know that you should be converting at 20%, you don't have any conversions, you know something's wrong. Um, so. Write these numbers down. Keep them kind of in a journal for future reference. And that wraps us up for testing budgets. Any last-minute questions before we move on to the, the final part of just actually adding keywords and doing permutations? OK, assuming that we've got that covered, let's talk about that. Um, and I use two free tools. Google's own keyword tool, and another one that I learned from uh, a mentor a long time ago, Dan Thies, and it still exists today, and it's just the coolest tool in the world. So um, the first and most obvious is Google's own free keyword tool, and I created just a quick link for you because it's a big, long, ugly URL that would be impossible to copy down. Um, but uh, so just go to tinyurl.com slash KW tool, and you'll go to AdWords editor, or AdWords free keyword tool. And the good news is, if you're logged into your account, you can go and generate keywords and directly pour them right into campaigns that you would have set up as placeholders for these keywords. 
Um, if you're not, you can copy and paste these into a spreadsheet and go manipulate that, those however you want. But there are two very important checkboxes when you use this tool. The first is you only want, when you're actually generating the keywords, like if you're initially just doing some brainstorming to find, to just kind of get a feel for your market and, and find maybe some alternate keywords that you didn't think of, uncheck this box and let them suggest a bunch of stuff. But once you get to the point of creating keyword groups, remember our, our custom red widgets keywords versus um, discount red widgets, in my opinion, those are two different keywords because custom is a lot different than discount. So it should be two different ad groups that should be monitored separately. And each should have its own testing budget. Well, when, that way, when you check this box, you can just put in like custom red widgets, red widgets custom, customized red widgets, a bunch of kind of seed keywords. And Google will then go and suggest a lot of other ones. But they will all have, they will all have to do with, you know, custom red widgets. Um, so that's what checking this box does, is it narrows the keywords that you generate to just ones that are very closely relate, related to the seed keywords that you put in. Don't do this example here. I mean, you want to get more targeted than this. You don't want to have one ad group of supplements and throw all of this stuff out there. Notice all of this stuff that is very different. I mean, discount supplements, bodybuilding supplements, weight loss supplements, those are each ad group categories of their own. So that's just item number one. Make sure this is checked and go for medium to long tail phrases and then kind of take those and import them into your account. Item number two is uncheck their default option of broad match and check the exact match option. That way they'll put these nice handy little brackets in there that tells Google, I don't want any keywords other than these that you just generated. Don't give me discount supplements that are offered for free. Um, Mary's stupid discount supplements. I don't know. I mean, what happens is when you do broad match is they get quite frankly somewhat reckless with substituting keywords that they think are relevant. That's where you start to burn up your budget. So this is a really important one to make sure that you are only driving exact match traffic. Um, and that's how you keep your expenses as low as possible and get results that are as accurate as possible. Now, if this isn't enough, like in some cases, you might only generate three to five keywords. And you want to go and test a bunch of other permutations. Uh, another tool that I use and this is an optional kind of extra credit tool, but it's pretty cool, is uh, uh, Aaron Wall's keyword permutation tool. And I've got the link up here. Quite frankly, all you need to do is go to, um, just go to Google and type in keyword permutation tool, and it'll be the number one result. Because um, it's a really popular tool, and he ranks number one for that. But, um, oops. So what this tool does, is it generates literally limitless permutations of your keyword. So actually, I have a, uh, I've got a quick, I've got it loaded up so we can do kind of a di live demo here for you. Um, so here it is, a, the, uh, the keyword tool, it's, it's changed a little since that screenshot I did, but uh, it's the keyword list generator. And basically what you're going to do is let's just say that we're gonna, we want to create a bunch of permutations for red widgets. So we can do red widget widgets um, and actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add another modifier. So I'm going to move this down, move this down, and I'm going to do custom, discount, uh, I don't know, free, cheap, customized. You get the idea. Um, as you can see, you can start to get pretty high volumes of keywords pretty quick. Um, 
because what I'm going to do is take all these, combine this with this with this, and let's add another one. Um, so we have custom red widgets online. Um, heck, we could do, <laughs> we could even add other ones and say order custom red widgets online. You could really start to go crazy. And actually, just for kicks, I'm going to do that. Move down, move down, move down, move down. I'm going to say order. There we go. So now I'm going to say, give me exact match results only, generate. And this just generated a ton of permutations that I can just go and copy and paste into the AdWords account that I already created. So this is where you can test a large set of very, very tightly knit keywords. Notice that these all have to do with red widgets. Um, granted, I might separate custom from, from discount, but this was for the sake of demonstration. Hopefully, you guys get the idea. Um, so that's free tool number two that you can use to just add keywords into each ad group so that you can test those keywords. Um, basically, oh, I just realized that I added a, a sixth section, and that's setting up multiple ads. This is also very important, especially for SEO reasons, because a lot of times when we write our title tags and our meta descriptions, um, we write what we think is best from an SEO standpoint, but it might not be best from a conversion standpoint. So while we're driving traffic, we also want to test multiple ads. Um, and basically what you want to do when you do that is just add, and this is a recent development that makes it really, really easy. So you're going to add two to five different ads per ad group, and you're going to set your options. Um, Google has a handy little setting in the campaign settings that says optimize for conversions. And what that means is at Google, you can write two, five, ten different ads. And eventually, once you have enough conversions, Google will track the best performing ad for you. And that's huge. Like that can help a lot with your SEO. So you're doing SEO to get their website to rank number one eventually. But in addition, why not also do research to find out what headline gets the best click-through rate? And also do research to find out what description gets the best click-through rate. So you, that's what you're doing by testing multiple ads. So when you find a winning ad, you go and then change your, your title tags and you change your meta descriptions on your client's websites and you'll get better click-through rates. And that way you can get more traffic out of the same ranking uh, versus having to go and find a new keyword to rank for. Um, so that's a really, really powerful sixth step that I added and, and, uh, and, and put in there last minute. So after you've taken all of those steps, uh, this is just kind of a, a quick and dirty example of what you might start to see down the road. So eventually you'll start to see, like let's just say that you're, you're hypothetical blue widget client who told you that they want to rank number one for blue widgets and you say okay well let's test for that keyword but while we're at it let's test for all of these other keywords too and you'll eventually start to get clicks coming through you'll start to see cost you'll start to see what average position they are that's going to give you an indicator of how competitive those various keywords are so just at a glance you can start to see oh wow well, that's a really competitive keyword it's expensive and it's only ranking number seven. And look, it didn't get a lot of conversions. That cost me nearly $100 per conversion. All these other ones, discount, custom, yeah, these, this discount got me also a lot of clicks but no conversions. Why? Well, because they're looking for discount widgets and your widgets cost 100 bucks. Um, but hey, look at this, blue custom widgets doesn't get a lot of search. It only gets half of this one that they want to rank for. But it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot less competitive, which probably is a good indicator that's a, a long tail term. And hey, that got a lot of conversions. And again, this is a hypothetical example. I can't ever show my, my client's actual uh, data. But what you would see is that 
wow, it's a cheap cost per conversion. It's a pretty low competition. This is going to be one that's going to be easy to rank for. So while your client initially said, we want to rank number one for blue widgets, that might take you three, six, eight months to do. Blue custom widgets, you could probably do by next month. And you could start to get them a lot of conversions. Um, so that's what you start to see once you load up your keywords. And remember, you're, you load them up as exact match only. So you know that this was the exact term that they typed in, and that generated 20 sales for you. And hey, they're $100 widgets, so that's two grand that you generated in sales for your clients. So again, you have to plug in your own numbers and your own scenarios. But just by simply sorting by conversions and average position, you can just instinctually get a feel for what the easiest to rank for keywords will be. And more importantly, what keywords are going to generate the most sales for, uh, for your clients. Oh man, thanks for that feedback. I, I, uh, I forgot I needed, I'm, I have three monitors and I'm sitting here talking away with a slide that isn't showing. So here we go. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to have to start over. So here is an example of what you would see after you load your keywords, after you're testing your ads, and after you're testing all of those exact match keywords in the Google network. You would start to see that, you know, you'd see how many actual clicks you got. You would actually see how many impressions you got, which is an indicator of exactly how many searches there are per month. Not an estimate, an actual number. Um, and you'd see all these kind of numbers that would help give you an indicator of, well, they want to rank for that, but you could demonstrate, look, it's not, it's not generating a lot of sales. It's not worth the trouble. It's just not worth the trouble to rank for this keyword. Tell you what, let's take that budget and dump it into these, this one, this one, and this one. You know, these top three. This one looks pretty good, too. Let's, let's go after all of those, and I can have you ranking on all of those terms on the first page within the next few months, whereas it might take uh, six or eight months to rank for this, only to find out that it, it won't generate sales. So this right here is, is so important and can help you out so much with earning their trust and acting as their advocate rather than just someone who's going to just jump right in and start driving traffic for them. Um, so I really want you to think about that. Make sure to think about budgets and think about getting a testing budget um, from your clients so that you can do a better job for them in the long run. Um, good question. What ad position should you target? I'm not a big believer in targeting the top three until you know your metrics inside and out. I have plenty of keywords that we are pegged in the number one position, but that's only after we've done testing and we know that we can consistently convert at a very affordable rate and we are as aggressive as feasibly possible. For testing purposes, I think you're fine doing three if you really want, if, if it's a tough market to get traffic in, maybe position two. Um, but I, I really think targeting kind of that average position of three to five. Um, if even six, because remember, the lower you rank, the cheaper the clicks, the farther you can stretch that testing budget. So um, you, sure, you could rank number one and get a lot of traffic really fast, but you're going to burn through the, the, your budget three to five times faster than if you're bidding in the four or five position. Um, so personally, I, I'm not a big believer in... Uh, bidding in that number one to number three position until you know your numbers. I have plenty of clients that we bid very aggressively on on certain keywords, but that's only because we know those keywords make a killing and we get a lot of sales from them. Um, I have one client that we do so extremely well. We have such a phenomenally good ROI that you know we make sure that we bid way more uh, than necessary to make sure that we never ever lose that number one position. Um, and my clients will call me and they'll say, hey, we, our average position last month was 1.5, let's ratchet it up. So, but that's, that's down the road. That's, you know, once you know your metrics and if you decide to continue with AdWords. My whole point with this presentation, though, is AdWords is not for traffic. I mean, it can be, but it gets a lot more complicated when you start to do that because you start to 
you start to think in different ways, you start to get more aggressive, your ROI margins start to shrink, and it becomes a net volume game versus a percentage ROI game. This, this isn't even that. This is research and development so that your SEO efforts can be as fruitful as possible. Um, but good question on what position to target. So, um, a final thought. This is, and I'm being redundant here, this is not about getting sales for them um, or, or, or getting a lot of, tra of sales. This is not about gener generating traffic for the sake of generating traffic. It's about getting data that you can use and directly apply it into your SEO efforts. And then um, if you're a member of Newbie PPC, you've probably heard me and Howie talk about all of the other things that you can do um, in terms of leverage. But again, we're just sitting here talking about what you can learn for SEO from an R&D standpoint. And it's worth its weight in gold. I don't care what you have to spend per click. Your client's going to eventually spend that one way or another uh, in SEO. And you may as well spend it up front to verify that you can a they can actually convert that traffic into sales. Um, so that's kind of the... the uh, the final thought I want to leave you with. And then the one other thing too is we talked about this a little bit before and this is the mindset you need to go into when you consult with your clients. Just because the average spend might be two dollars per click, CPC stands for cost per click, and the the average instant return might only be a dollar. So in other words you're losing fifty cents on the dollar. Does that mean it's a failure? And my argument is absolutely not because there are still a lot of other things you have to decide. Um, just because you lost 50 cents on the dollar on this, remember, this is research and development. That's still cheap. Um, the reason Sesame Street was a very, very successful uh, TV show was because they spent obscene amounts of money on not just every episode, but every skit. They had focus groups, and they paid and bribed kids to come in and sit and watch their episodes, and they would have, like, distractions going on, and any time those kids got distracted by something other than the episode, they'd scrap that episode, or, or scrap that skit, um, and they only ran skits that kept the majority of kids' attention. That's R&D, and that's expensive. Losing 50 cents on the dollar on a $500 or $1,000 testing budget, that's nothing. Um, so, you know, the question is, if you do lose 50 cents on the dollar, just, is that a green light for you? Could you get organic traffic and have that average cost cost less than 50% of what it's costing you on pay-per-click? And if so, then sure, you can go ahead with your SEO efforts. If not, well, then good thing you found this out early because you would have wasted a lot of time and money on a keyword that isn't profitable. Um, the, uh, the more important thing is, can you find other keywords that you didn't think of? And that's where that keyword permutation tool comes into play. That's where looking at your analytics comes into play. Um, and then even more importantly is, I guarantee there are going to be easier to rank for keywords that your clients are going to be going, eh, that's not worth our time. Well, sure it is. If you can build like 20 links um, to a page so that you rank for a, uh, a long tail keyword, that's worth your time. It's well worth your time. And trust me, 10 long tail keywords are worth 100 or 200 uh, non-targeted, um, more competitive keywords. Because by definition, long tail means that your buyers are farther along in the sales cycle. So they're more likely to become leads for you or sales for you. Um, Oops, and I got ahead of myself there. Um, the bottom line, the moral of the story is that you want to, uh, you, you don't want to just jump when your client says jump. You want to be a trusted advisor. And sure, you might get a quick buck and you might land a quick deal if you can quickly talk them into being your SEO consultant for ranking for the keyword supplements. But... Four or six months down the road, you will very likely end up with a frustrated customer who can do you more harm than good um, in terms of bad reputation. Uh, whereas if you just kind of slow down and take things a little more slowly and say, hey, let's, let's 
let's do this strategically and do what's best for you in the long run, you'll you might lose some deals because some other slick talking salesperson might land the deal that you would have otherwise had. But the deals that you do get will be from trusting clients who love everything you have to say and um, and are going to work with you a long time to come. And I, I can say that from experience. I've had clients who I build obscene amounts of money for the work I did. And uh, my, you know, my wife does our invoicing. And one time she even said, are we going to send this invoice? And I, and I said, yeah, we generated lots of sales. We're going to do it. And not only that, but the next month their accountant, their bookkeeper went on vacation. And the CEO personally called me after sending the biggest invoice I had sent in my life. And he personally called and said, hey, I apologize. Our, our bookkeeper's on vacation. We're going to wire that your, uh, your invoice right off to you. Um, I just wanted to let you know, you know, we don't, it's, it's not that we don't appreciate what you're doing. I uh, just wanted to personally call and say that. So, I mean, those are the kind of relationships you want. You don't want a quick buck. You want lifelong relationships from clients who are going to be ecstatic and refer lots of other business to you. And that's what hopefully this kind of shared with you and you can take uh, and apply into your business. So with that said, um, if you have questions, you can always email me. As always, I can't promise that I will answer them. I do not answer specific AdWords questions one-on-one -on -one via email except for clients who have me on retainer. Um, but if it's something that would make a good blog post, I will usually, uh, I will usually answer it and, and, and make it a blog post for the benefit of uh, my other clients and, and blog readers. And a new, very new development that I'm excited to announce is that Howie Jacobson and I, Howie's the author of AdWords for Dummies, have partnered for a AdWords management company. So if you do ever have, um, if you just want help, if all of this stuff sounds too complicated, we're glad to be the white label behind the scenes service who does this for you. And we can, we can set up an invoice for you and you can you know, uh, build in uh, kind of a finder's fee payment for yourself and just pass that expense on to your client. We're glad to do that. Uh, it's, it's not a cheap service. Um, we do have a minimum threshold, but uh, it is something that we're glad to explore with you. So go ahead and poke around Vitruvian Way. It's a brand, brand new site that we literally just put up this week, um, but we're excited about the things that Howie and I are uh, putting together, and as well as the team that he has had working with him for years. So feel free to contact me any either of those ways through through my existing consulting website or uh, through Vitruvian Way which is our new website that expresses uh, how he's and my mission combined with what you can, all of the different cool things you can do with AdWords. So um, if you have any other questions, ask them now. Otherwise, I have to apologize. I, I rambled on for 90 minutes, and um, I hoped I'm just having it a 60-minute session for you. So thanks for sticking around. I'm flattered and honored. And... Um, if you have any thoughts, questions, feedback, feel free to chime in now. Otherwise, I will sign off for the night and uh, say thank you for joining me. Going once, going twice. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a great night.